so you should have heard it water water everywhere but not a drop of water to drink but in reality the water you cannot drink is basically responsible for all of your drinking water what am i saying let's find out hello world this is sandeep rana from definer our planet the planet earth is also called the planet of water 71% of the earth's surface is covered in water water is the basis of all the life on planet earth we ourselves consume 135 liters of water per person per day for activities like drinking cooking washing utensils toilets etc this 135 liters of water what we use is not even 10% of our total water requirement almost 70 to 80% of the water we use for agriculture to produce food and for industrial uses we use somewhere around 10 to 20% of the water so sometimes you might wonder if the surface of earth is covered with 71% of water then why do people face water scarcity should there always be an endless supply of water all the time right but we are not so fortunate in this instance all the water what we use is called fresh water or usable water sea water on the other hand has a lot of salts and minerals dissolved in it which makes that water unworthy for drinking cooking or even for agriculture so we have to be dependent on rivers lakes and bore wells for the supply of this fresh water but the problem is all the fresh water put together is only 0.5% of the total water availability on earth <laughs> to put that in perspective if all the water on the entire planet is equal to 1 liter then the amount of fresh water we have is equal to a teaspoon now i never said all the water in oceans is useless because without oceans we would have never had fresh water in first place to understand this we need to have an idea about water cycle like any other material water have some properties when you put heat in water it will turn into gas this is called evaporation and when you take out heat from this gas it will turn into water again this is called condensation and when you take out more heat out of water it will be turned into ice so during day time some heat sub water and a small amount of water is turned into vapor this vapor then starts its journey towards the sky carrying some heat with it now when this water vapor rises to a certain height the air surrounding it becomes a lot cooler at this height you will also find a lot of small cool microscopic dust particles now when water vapor hits these dust particles condensing takes place and it forms a water layer around the dust particle now when millions of such water layer droplets are formed you see a cloud Now over the period of time these droplets collide with each other and gain mass meanwhile the air takes the clouds from one place to another now when these droplets become heavy and heavier they can't resist falling back to earth again do you remember what is this called rain now when this water falls back to earth some of it will go into the ground some of it will reach a stream and then to a river and from this river some of the water will reach your tap and some of it will be used for agriculture but most of it will fall into the ocean once again completing a cycle which is known as water cycle So water cycle is the story of this unusable water from oceans transforming itself into the awesome water at your home today. Just remember one thing fresh water is precious do not waste.